Several viewers that have watched this channel have sent me items from around the world. Oftentimes it's a wonderful letter or a postcard or some of their own artwork, but other times it is a piece of postal history, such as a postage stamp or an old cover or just really any piece of postal ephemera. Well, now and then I get an item that really just needs its own episode. That is because, well, we'll need to talk about it more than just a few minutes on a mail episode. This is one of those episodes. Andre in Ukraine sent me a couple of items and we have to talk about them. Andre initially reached out to me through the International Philatelic Promoters Discord channel and had asked me if he can send me an item with a very important postage stamp while of course his country is defending itself from a Russian invasion. And I can totally say with confidence that this postage stamp is without doubt the stamp of the year. This is 2022's most talked about stamp. It captures Ukraine's resilience and attitude to the Russian invasion just perfectly. And it's amazing in so many ways. Of course, Andre sent it on this letter, but then later sent it on this postcard with three different versions of the stamp. Different because he had to keep up with updates and progress of Ukraine's defense campaign. So let's look at Andre's letter and postcard that has this very special stamp on this episode of Hashtag Flatly. It has happened. This is Ukraine's capital. What seemed unthinkable in the 21st century is now underway. President Vladimir Putin launched an all-out assault on multiple cities across the Eastern European nation overnight. Russian helicopters attacking an airport near the capital, Kyiv. A democratic country has been invaded by its nuclear-armed neighbor on multiple fronts. So Ukraine and Russia are at war all since the 24th of February this year, 2022. And at the time of this episode, it is still ongoing with no end in sight. Now hearing reports of cruise missile strikes. In Attacks on civilian targets are increasing. It is a full-scale attack forcing Ukrainians to decide whether to flee or to fight. And Ukraine is hoping its forces will be able to roll back the Kremlin's war machine as it launches a counteroffensive. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of the war or its background or where we are right now, as I'm sure many of you are watching are very well aware of what's going on. But philately, stamp collecting has gotten involved once again, making an appearance during this major moment and in a way that we haven't really seen before. This stamp, released on April 12th of this year, 2022, features a Ukrainian soldier on Snake Island in the Black Sea, giving the international symbol for... Well, uh, let's go with what Wikipedia calls an offensive gesture of defiance to the Russian ship Moskva. The stamp is so popular that when Andre sent it to me, both of us were concerned that the stamp on the letter could get stolen en route, as there were several people that had claimed that this had happened to them, and they were being listed on eBay for ridiculously high prices. But Andre took the risk and he sent these items through the mail. Now I have two postally used items bearing this stamp. The stamp has been featured in the news, posted by collectors on social media. There are plenty of articles discussing it. I was even interviewed in one and the punk philatelist wrote about it. Of course, Lynn Stamp News can't stop talking about it. So what is all the hype about this stamp? Snake Island, also called Serpent Island or Zminyi Island, is an island that belongs to Ukraine in the Black Sea. Its location is important. Sitting just 22 miles or 35 kilometers from the coast of Ukraine, you can imagine that it would be a military advantage to occupy the island. And so on the 24th of February, the first day of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, a Russian patrol boat and a Russian warship approached the island. Ukraine had 13 guardsmen stationed at this island from the State Border Guard Service of Ukraine. And when those two Russian ships advanced on the island, one of them radioed to the men requesting that they surrender or else. So a Ukrainian border guard responded in an insulting manner. Russian warship go, well, you know, go away, um, but with a bad word. The response gained worldwide attention. You can listen to the message online and it pretty much set the tone for Ukraine's response to Russia's invasion and the country's resilience and spirit throughout this war. 
Now, those guardsmen were thought to be dead as Ukraine lost contact with them, and President Volodymyr Zelensky awarded the Hero of Ukraine medal to the deceased soldiers. However, later we found out that the soldiers were actually still alive and they had been captured by the Russians to be later freed in a prisoner exchange. Okay, so as you can imagine, everyone in Ukraine has pretty much been impacted by this war from the very beginning. Well, the Ukrainian Postal Service, Ukroposhta, very quickly took action to do what postal services do best, send a message. Ukroposhta announced on the 1st of March a competition for the development of a sketch that will be used on a stamp illustrating the message response from Snake Island. Well, this competition generated like 500 entries, and just a week after the announcement, the top 20 were posted to Facebook to go to a vote. The images showed resilience, they showed pride, and they also honored the 13 guardsmen. Some 20 images that were not only artistic, they really embodied the raw emotion of a country that was just days into an invasion. Ultimately, it was number three that won and became the stamp issued in April. The artist Boris Gro was a professional artist who actually originally lived in Crimea until the 2014 Russian invasion. So, no stranger to Russian aggression. And of course, this adds to the meaning of the stamp. I don't think we've seen such a blatant and direct message on a postage stamp, especially with a gesture like this one. Although there are, of course, North Korea stamps, North Korea has always liked to share its feelings on postage stamps, often blatant and direct messages as well, but they've done such a lot of this, so much so that nobody really takes these images seriously. In them, they have primarily targeted the United States and Japan. So there's that. North Korea has done something similar, although it just doesn't feel the same because, well, it's not during war, and maybe I'm just being biased because Ukraine's messaging is not pointed in, well, this direction. To me, a closer middle finger equivalent in Flasley could be associated with Nicaragua's 1937 stamp, where they claimed a piece of neighboring Honduras as being disputed, which almost caused a war between the two countries. It was a pretty big deal at the time. Both Honduras and Nicaragua mobilized their armies, but thankfully it never escalated to war. Well, anyway, this Ukrainian stamp definitely feels different to that. This isn't about airing grievances or provoking anyone. This is about defiance. It's about the people of Ukraine standing up against the invading threat, as if the stamp itself is a part of a nation's rallying cry and the imagery is important. Ukraine chose to add the Russian flag onto the Moskva ship that was not in Boris Gro's artwork. Probably to make sure that it was not just the ship that they were giving the gesture to, but the invading government of Russia. And yes, there is a Ukrainian flag on the soldier's right arm. But, of course, there is a much larger flag in this image. The color scheme. The stamp represents the bands of blue and yellow, colors that have a long history with Ukraine, and were arranged in this format in 1848 when the flag first appeared. Apparently, this color arrangement was intentional to represent the blue sky and golden wheat fields, the typical agricultural landscape of Ukraine. This is according to Encyclopedia Britannica. The flag was outlawed when the country was part of the Soviet Union, but it was of course brought back proudly in 1991 and 1992 following the collapse of the Soviet Union. And it first appeared on Ukrainian postage stamps in 1992, depicted with the state coat of arms, a trident head, another important symbol for Ukraine. Well, on this 2022 stamp, you can see the trident here as well. And note the W on the stamp, which indicates that this particular stamp was intended for worldwide postage. Now, you can imagine that the launch of the stamp was incredibly popular for the Ukrainians. People lined up for it, which by the looks of the line must have taken hours to get. I think there was a limit of one set per customer. Sales were opened internationally, 700,000 were on sale across Ukraine, 200,000 were reserved for territories occupied by Russian troops, and another 100,000 were to be sold online internationally. They were not to be reprinted once they sold out, and of the million that are out there, half of them were printed for international use, and the other half printed for domestic use. And perhaps what stamp collectors got most excited about was President Zelensky posting on his own Instagram account an image of him holding the stamps, which achieved over a million likes in little to no time. 
A couple other key things to note with the launch of the stamp. According to the Washington Post, the proceeds from the sale of these stamps went to Ukraine's war efforts. And during the first day ceremony, there was an appearance from the actual Ukrainian soldier who provided that eloquent message to Russia via the radio on Snake Island. I believe that he signed several items there as well. So basically, this stamp and all the hype around the stamp made collectors as well as non-collectors eager to get their hands on them. Now, if you're interested in getting one, you have to be careful because apparently there are a lot of fakes out there. So when shopping on eBay or other stamp platforms, do some homework on the stamps and the seller. Also, Stamperia, a third-party company that prints stamps for other countries, has been using the image for stamps of Sierra Leone. So be careful to not unintentionally purchase one of those instead. Now, back to this Ukrainian stamp and, of course, the letter that Andre wrote to me. He actually wrote to me telling me about the incident on Snake Island that this stamp was portraying and how the phrase became a symbol of the resistance of the Ukrainian people against the Russian aggression. And then pretty much a day later, after the issue of the stamp, the Russian warship was attacked and sank by Ukrainian forces. Yes, this is where things get really interesting, as if the issuing of the stamp was part of Ukraine's plan to take down the ship. The day after this stamp was issued, this Russian warship, which was Russia's flagship of their Black Sea fleet, considered to be the most powerful warship in the Black Sea region, was attacked and then later sank the next day. Philatelic history in the making, and you cannot make this story up. Now, the postcard that Andre sent to me later, um, actually the picture side of the postcard shows the imagery of the postage stamp that was issued with Boris Gros design, while the message side has four stamps, really two postage stamps and two labels, along with a quote from President Zelensky. Now, of these four stamps, one of them is the original stamp that he had sent me, both mint and on cover, and it's alongside three other stamps. Beneath it are two stamps that are joined and were issued after the ship sank. This one is a label that is not valid for postage, but has the original imagery with the word done included on the bottom right, along with the date that the ship sank, the 14th of April. And then this one is the actual postage stamp that came with it, except you'll notice that the Russian warship is missing. This, of course, became viral on social media, and the punk for that list had to provide us with a GIF demonstration of what exactly happened to that ship that was on the stamp. And along those lines, Ukraine's official Instagram account made a filter available where you can dress up like the soldier and watch the ship sink in augmented reality. Now, let me be very clear here. I don't mean to celebrate war, death, or conflict. These stamps are already historical artifacts. They have captured a moment in time, as many stamps have done in the past that have celebrated victories or depicted battles. The stamp is already part of that history. These were issued again with President Zelensky posting on Instagram, saying that things like the stamp are first and foremost symbols that help us believe in our victory. We will have many more such symbols and, well, they do. Ukraposhta has issued another stamp since then, this time of a tractor towing a disabled Russian tank, a common story shared since the early days of the war, farmers towing the destroyed Russian tanks off the road. It is another powerful image for the people of Ukraine. Now, Andre was quite clever because he added a fourth stamp to this postcard. It features King Neptune on the sea and there's that trident again. It's a propaganda stamp from the underground post of Ukraine an unrecognized postal department that issued stamps from 1949 through the 1980s. They issued Ukrainian non-postage stamps that served propaganda purposes. In the philatelic world, this is known as a Cinderella stamp. It's not a real postage stamp, but it is placed alongside real postage stamps on mail so that it can convey a message. Anyway, Neptune is the name of the Ukrainian anti-ship missiles that were used to sink the Moskva. According to Ukraine, apparently two of these Neptune missiles hit the ship and were the cause for its destruction. So Andre, being quite brilliant here, has used a stamp that already stood for defiance and pride to not only stand for that now, but to symbolically communicate the means to which the Russian warship was destroyed. So these postal items that Andre sent to me are just glowing with Ukrainian pride. Now, has the Russian Postal Service responded to these Ukrainian stamps? 
I don't think so. It appears that they're issuing the same stamps that you'd expect from Russia throughout the year. Anything from raspberries to Russian heroes, World War II uniforms, but funny enough, tractors. Hmm. As for these postal items, I will absolutely cherish them all. Thank you, Andre, for providing me and my viewers an opportunity to learn about this stamp. I hope that you and your family are safe. And that goes to all of my viewers in Ukraine, or really all the people of Ukraine. I'll leave a link to Ukroposhta if you would like to order new issues that are available from Ukraine. At the time of this video, the tractor stamps of which 2 million had been printed are still available for purchase, although I suspect they won't be for much longer. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this episode. Stamp collecting, it's really an amazing hobby. And this is a stamp that I'm proud to have in my collection. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.